One outcome tonight. I want to help you close more deals. How's that sound, everybody? Yes. Yeah. So the way I want to help you close more deals is I want to show you how you can leverage LinkedIn to find, connect, and close your next big transaction. And this system I'm gonna show you this evening has three core components to it. It's gonna take about 40 to 45 minutes to go through. It's, it's almost a standard operating procedure that you can model. And what's great is I've been utilizing this for the last, I'd say two and a half, three years now with over 250 different m and professionals. Business brokers, investment bankers, private equity groups, m and advisors, you name it. And um, I'm gonna unpack each one of these steps for you tonight so that way you can model it. Uh, but before I get into that, I'll give a little background on myself. Um, I'm not a business broker. I'm not an M&A advisor. I'm not an investment banker. I'm not a private equity dude or gal. I don't work on complex transactions like you guys do all day. I don't have those skill sets. But I have different skills and tools in my business tool belt that have helped me. And one of them that is really sharp is I'm good at lead generation. I'm really good at getting meetings and appointments with sell side opportunities that you're looking to get in front of. And how I developed this skill set was back in 2017, I co-founded a marketing agency. It was relatively generic. We, we scaled it to work with about 500 different companies across 61 industries. And one day, um, I got an odd phone call from a client of ours. His name is Bill Ship, And Bill Ship is a mergers and acquisitions advisor for healthcare companies, specifically dental practices. And Bill calls me up and he's like, Matt, what, what the heck, except to use a different choice word, are you, is going on with this lead generation campaign? And I'm like, what do you mean, Bill? What do you mean what's going on with it? It seems to be working pretty effectively. He said, no, no, don't get me wrong. Whatever you're doing, do not fall. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. We've never had this much deal flow before. In fact, we're closing one of the largest dental healthcare uh, practices in the US. And he's selling it to like Heartland Dental, I guess, which is a large uh, private equity conglomerate for, for dental practices. And I thought to myself, okay, uh, what's your what, what's the economics look like for you? Like, what does the commission structure look like? And when he told me about you know how your guys' commission structure looks, I was like, this, this is great. I wonder if I can do this with other M and A professionals just like Bill. So we started reaching out to different business brokers, M and A advisors, investment bankers, and what we found is that what we did for Bill, we're able to do over and over and over again. So me and my co-founder decided to open a company. 100% dedicated and 100% focused on helping m and professionals like yourselves close more deals. And if you're looking to close more deals, here's what I believe. So listen to me on this, okay? I believe your number one asset, if you're looking to close more transactions, is to have a lead generation system that you control. Meaning that you can reach out in the marketplace and pull in deal opportunities, okay? And we, 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 get, we get bombarded all the time by all these different strategies and tactics, don't we? Like it's just, there's so many different options we can have. And here's what I'm gonna tell you. What I'm gonna show you, I don't think is a secret sauce. I'm not saying this is the best way, this is the only way, this is the way that you should be 100% considering everything moving forward. This is an ingredient, okay? I'm a principles guy, I, I, don't, I don't believe in tactics. And this is a tactic, but I think it's one of the best tactics that I think you could deploy. Before we get into it, I will show you marketing simplified. Because it's so complex, we have all these different options. Why would we just simplify things? And the way to look at marketing in a simplified manner is there's only three ways you generate deals or leads. There's only three ways. It's one of these three. Seeds, nuts, and spears. I didn't invent this process. This was developed by the gentleman that implemented the, uh, <coughs> he helped put the, the, the sales engine into Salesforce. He got them to like 600 million by utilizing this system. Seeds is how most of us generate deals. How many of you would you say like 50% or more of your deals come from referrals by show of hands? Yeah, majority of us, right? I love referrals, those are all great. In fact, a good question I like to ask myself is how would I run my business if 100% of my future stream of earnings depended on referrals only? It's a good way to think of things. Second thing is Nets. Nets is more of like broadcast um, marketing, if you will, like you know, LinkedIn articles, SEO blogs, uh, pay-per-click advertising, things like that. You're not sure what you're gonna specifically get caught in the net, and it's great, good stuff, again. Third way is Spears. Spears is, I'm gonna create a specific targeted list of prospects that I wanna go after and, and point at that person and say, I wanna have a conversation with you. Do you wanna have a conversation with me? And we go after them that way. So how we generate deal flow in the deal flow landscape is through something that we call the spectrum of readiness or the deal flow landscape. 
These are generalizations. This is an exact science, okay? But this, is, this was built by a gentleman named Shet Holmes, which was um, Charlie Munger's top, he, he, we all know, is anyone not familiar with Charlie Munger? It's Warren Buffett's business partner. He hired a guy named Shet Holmes who invented this, and it's how he helped accelerate all their growth in their companies. So at the top 3% of, of any market, 3% of your prospects are ready to exit their business. They're, see, they're seeking uh, intermediaries or they're seeking buyers to sell. We go down a notch, 7% are thinking about it. They're considering it. 30% haven't thought about it. They have not thought about it, but they'd be open to a conversation. Another 30% tranche is they don't think they're interested, but it doesn't mean they, would, they wouldn't entertain a dialogue around it. And the bottom 30% know, hey, we're, we're too early or we have too much going on with, with growth and initiatives. We're just not interested at all. So how does those seeds, nets, and spears fit into this? Why is that relevant to this? Well, the challenge is, is a lot of us only focus this top 3%, whether it's by mistake or, or on purpose, it's through inbound marketing. Again, love it. We do this too. We, we love inbound marketing, and it's primarily driven by seeds and nets. Seeds is referral sources, nets is broadcast marketing. When those opportunities are getting to you, by the time they get to you, they're generally non-exclusive. They're talking to other brokers, they're talking to other advisors, they're, they're, they're talking to specific um, uh, private equity groups, strategic buyers, buyers, doesn't matter. Next one is time and resource intensive. We go to trade shows, we kiss babies, we shake hands. It's time and resource intensive. There's generally low volume, and I get it. We're all like, oh, I want quality over quantity. I want both. Why do we have to sacrifice, right? I want both quality and quantity. And lastly, which is a big thing, is lacks consistency. So we have ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. I want predictability and consistency. And that's where outbound marketing comes in. That's where the spearing method comes in. And yes, I'm biased about this because this is what I do for a living. Outbound marketing is spears. So again, we can create a targeted list of prospects that we want to go after. By the time they get to you, you can generally sell them in a vacuum, meaning that they're exclusive and they're your opportunities. You're the one that's starting and initiating the conversation. It's predictable when you get a system down, pretend you can send for every 100 messages you send, you know you're gonna get three, five, or 10 appointments. That's what I want. And lastly, is it's multi-use, meaning you can reach out to referral sources. You can, you can reach out to referral sources or centers of influence to pull in deal flow or go directly to the target itself. So why LinkedIn? Why are we gonna talk about LinkedIn as a good spearing method? Number one, what do you think people are gonna do and what do you all do if someone reaches out to have a conversation with you? Like, what do you do? What are you, what are you gonna do if, if a stranger reaches out? You're gonna look them up, right? The first place you're gonna look is your website, second place, LinkedIn. So having a presence alone is very, very powerful. Second big reason is we're looking at almost 800 million prospects are on LinkedIn, 800 million. And 65 million of them are your, target, are, are your uh, target prospects. They're CEOs and owners of businesses. And they're not just there, they're active. 48.5% are logging in and using the platform on a monthly basis. So the system we created again has three steps. Number one, who's your ideal prospect? And what does that look like? Number two, what are we going to say to them once we identify who that is? And then what is the step-by-step -step tactical process that you can run and execute daily to fill your pipelines with deal opportunities. Step number one, identify your ideal prospect. Let me put on a bumper sticker for you. Get uncomfortable. Get uncomfortably focused with who your ideal prospect is. Now, when I say this, everybody in the room is gonna go, yeah, I can't do that, which is define a certain segment of specific markets or industries that would fit your ideal target customer or target prospect. And a lot of you are saying that because I know we all work in specific regions. Obviously we're all, we're all here in California and it makes it tough, but here's what I can tell you. I'm not saying you have to change like who your ideal prospect is a brokerage or suggesting that or you as an individual, but I'm saying for marketing campaigns, get very focused because when you create any kind of marketing campaign, whether it's with this, with LinkedIn, or you're doing a direct mail campaign or you're doing anything else, it's about how sharp is the message to that individual. And what we see is people's deal flow, triple or, or four or five X, just by having a razor sharp message that is for somebody else. The best way I can illustrate this is through a strategy called Red Ocean versus Blue Ocean. Has anyone read this book before? 
Anyway, it's super cool. This is a super simple concept and a premise. But let me like, I love this little illustration. So on the left hand side, we have a red ocean. And on the right hand side, we have a blue ocean. The red ocean, as you can see, it's very bloody. Uh, there's a very few prospects in the water there. And we have many people fishing to try to catch those fish, right? On the right hand side, we have a vast blue, lots of depth. Many, 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 many prospects with only one or two people fishing in that pond. And to unpack that a little bit further, the red ocean is when we don't have an ideal prospect focused and we're trying to reach out to them, you're viewed in a highly competitive manner. You have to fight for demand. You have to prove, hey, here's why you should have a conversation with me. And it's hard to, and you lack differentiation. And we want to shift and pivot where we have a vast amount of infinite opportunities. Rather than fighting for demand and trying to prove ourselves, we want to create demand. And rather being viewed as an option or, or an alternative, we want to be viewed as brokers or advisors as the only option, the option, the most optimal option. And that's what we want to pivot to. And the premise, and I'll put this on a bumper sticker for you too, the way to do this is to not try to be better, but to be different. And I'll unpack that because that sounds kind of vague, but I'll get to in a second. So don't try to be better than their alternatives or better than you know, your competition, but be different. That's mo us moving into a category of one. So how many of us like wine? Do, are there any wine fans here? Yeah, okay, good. So Yellowtail, I'm gonna show you how Yellowtail did this. It's super cool. Yellowtail actually implemented the blue ocean strategy to grab market share. And in the wine space, especially in the early 2000s, everybody, Everybody focused on the product. They focused on what they do, the what. And they focused on the aging of the wine, the legs, the quality, the vineyard prestige. They focused on the narrative of you know, how it went through the family and how they're you know, the latest and the greatest wine and have, they've created the best product. And they have all these different complexities of options that we can choose from these wines. So Yellowtail sat back, this is early 2000, like, huh. Okay, so we can, we can talk about having a better product, but how can we break through? How can we break through the noise? So what they decided to do was focus on the individual, the who. Who are we for? This is tying back to who defining an ideal prospect. Who are we for? And if you look at their website, this isn't me just putting random words up. Everything about them, everything about Delatail talks about, hey, if you're fun and adventurous, we're for you. Or if you want to be fun and adventurous, we're for you. It's an identity. We have easy selection versus all these complexities. If you want simplified taste, we're for you. We're the right people. And they broke into the wine industry and became the leader in about 2005. I don't know where they stand now. I'm sure they're, we all see them everywhere. But they've now, and by implementing the Blue Ocean strategy, by identifying who they are for, put them in this position. So lead generation in any type, when you're doing any kind of campaign, is not about what you do. Do not talk about what you do. It's good. That's part of it. But what captivates people's attention is who you are for. So what do we do when clients come on board to really hone and, and perfect that when we're crafting campaigns for them? We ask them a few questions. We go, hey, look back at the last 36 months. Who did you get the best results for with your clientele? Well, who has the most pain? There's a lot going on in the marketplace right now, right? There is, you know, we just went through this COVID transition and still going through it. We have the recession now. There's certain industries that need to unload. So most pain, there's trends, which I just talked about. Maybe you are really good at developing certain systems through Simdex and setting up CAs and you have many different dots in the map, meaning there's many different buyer opportunities as well as you have many different uh, contacts of buyers because a huge concern and a question mark that prospects are gonna have is, hey, who are you gonna, who's beyond you? Who, who's on the other half of you as the intermediary? Who are you gonna help me sell to? Right? They want to find the right buyer. And if you can demonstrate that you have many dots on the map, that's going to ink, take them from a state of uncertainty to a state of certainty. And that's what we want to create. And a lot of you, I bet, probably have some experience as operators or you've been involved in family businesses or whatever it may be in certain sectors. We see tremendous, not only deal flow capturing, but actually closing transactions with people that can talk to a seller where they've been in their shoes. They know their pain. They can ask pointy questions that only an industry insider would know. Once you define that, you can then list at the different industries you have, the different subsectors, the locations, the economics, meaning the revenue bands, and how many years they've been in business. Now that we've defined it, the question is, okay, well, how do we capture this data? We, we've got it now. How do we capture this data into a solidified database via LinkedIn? 
And I would buy this, all of you, no matter, I don't, I'm not an affiliate with Sales Navigator, God, I wish I was, but uh, Sales Navigator is an amazing data platform for any kind of prospecting. If, I'm serious, if you don't take one thing away from this presentation and you don't implement some of the stuff I'm gonna show you, I would utilize this tool for at least research and doing other prospecting activities. How many of you are using Sales Navigator? Okay, good, so about, yeah, one fifth or so. I, I would recommend at least do it, I think they have a trial for it maybe. It's amazing what you can see by using this. Microsoft owns LinkedIn. I think Microsoft knows a thing or two about data and running good businesses. So this is a great tool that we use. Once you have that, you can then put in the different variables you have. So pretend you narrowed it down to three to five different sectors. You're like, hey, you know what? These are the three to five sectors that we do really good in. What you can do, every, everybody knows this. When it comes to databases, we can't, it's hard to get revenue ranges, isn't it? It's like impossible to get accuracy. So LinkedIn, what they do is they give you headcount ranges. So you put the headcount range of who your prospects are to the top left there. And so I, I did an example there. And then you go down, you make sure you put the accurate titles. So you wanna go after CEOs, founders, co-founders, owners, et cetera. And then you go over to where's the location. So we would put California or certain, certain locations within California. You can have a drop down menu there. And then list your top three to five sectors. Once you have that developed, you then get a list like this on the right-hand side. I highlighted it in red for you. And by the way, I think Greg's sending this out to you all later too, so like, it's cool that you're memorizing it, which I know is impossible, but you're gonna get this, so you can just duplicate this SOP. Right, I don't know where Greg is, but I think he'd, he'd give me the, oh yeah, you're gonna send this out to them, cool. So that, this, this is how it pop up, and you have all these results. Like see there where it says 289 results at the top, right up there? That's what you'll see, you see how many people within these parameters I put in can I find on LinkedIn. When you're done with that, you can just hover over top of each person and start seeing to make sure it looks like the kind of people you wanna get in front of. Okay, like, okay, yeah, this, this description sounds like the kind of person I'd wanna have a conversation with around exiting the business. Oh yeah, the, the company headcount's perfect. Oh yeah, they're in the right industry and in the right location. Perfect, I like this list. And if it's not the right kind of list, go back to Sales Navigator and make some adjustments. This is the VIP moment, which is very important points. So very important points are action moves we need to take. Number one, identify and map out who your ideal prospect is. I'm telling you, no matter what marketing campaign you're running, get clear on who is your ideal prospect and get uncomfortably focused. Next one, get Sales Navigator and build out those lists. So that's step one. And what's interesting is a lot of us get really caught up in having the data. But here's the problem with data. It's not power, it's potential power. They don't know who you are. You are completely obscure to these human beings that you created on this list. So what we have to do is make contact with them. We have to reach out and make effective contact to get their interest. And lead generation is all about this. It's not to sell, sell them on what you do. It's not to see if they're interested in exiting in the next two months. It's none of that. The only thing it's, it's meant to do is this, to communicate a message that stimulates their interest to create availability. You want to sell the availability with you to have a conversation around exiting. And we've sent out about, I mean, I'd say 100,000 messages a month for our clients. And we've developed some really good frameworks. This is the saucy stuff I think a lot of you are gonna like, which is I'm actually gonna show you the messages we legit send. And uh, so we send about 100,000 a month and we've got really good at developing frameworks on how we do it not copy and paste, not tactics, again, principles and frameworks. And an example is a client of ours that we brought on named Bob Balaban from Capstone Partners. Some of you may have heard of them, they're a pretty large investment bank. And he came to us and he said, hey guys, we're, we're, uh, we already got really good messaging through LinkedIn and cold calling and cold email. Can you just take our messages and, and duplicate it and just run your process, but don't change our messaging? We said, Roger that, absolutely. However, however, Bob, can we just run a split test campaign by just kind of changing some nuances to see what we can do to maybe increase the deal flow? He said, yeah, sure, You're very open to it. So we ran the process and, and about 90 days later, we tripled his results from his previous messaging that was working great. And it's not because we're super smarter than that, I mean, you, you figure out that there's good patterns when you send 100,000 messages a month. And we've developed good frameworks from that. And and he said it's scientific or something, it's not. It's, it's good principles and good process that we run. And 
The mistake we make when we're sending messages is something that I like to call detail dump or detail creep. Okay, detail creep. Lead generation is like dating, okay? When you meet somebody for the first time, most of us, I hope, don't run up to them and go, hey, I like the way you look. Um, I just bought a plane ticket to Hawaii for two to three weeks. Um, I bought a plane ticket for you, do you wanna come with me? They're gonna go, <laughs> do you talk about detail creep? That's an original creep. Or hey, and by the way, don't try it. I have and it does not work. Okay. <laughs> um, and that's what we fall. We fall in this detail creep, this detail dump mode that is ineffective. And it makes sense why we wanna do it. So let me illustrate it for you. On the y-axis, you have the level of detail of how much you'd send to somebody. On the, on the x-axis is time. And all of us been in those conversations with somebody when you're like, you've just met them for the first time, they tell you a bunch of information, like, I can't believe they just told me all that. We wanna avoid all that, right? So in, in, when it comes to lead generation, we're right here. We're in the, hey, I'm just getting to know who you are phase. And the problem that we, that we end up getting trapped into is this detail overload. We just word vomit on them. And it comes across as super needy. We send them way too much, way too soon. It's confusing, it's overwhelming, and it's repelling. And I get why we wanna do this. Because we wanna, a lot of us when we get excited about messaging somebody to get their attention, we don't wanna leave out certain nuances or details about how great we are and the transactions we've worked on and you know all this amazing stuff about what we do because we're worried that we might miss out a key piece of information that might make them interested to have a conversation with us. But we have to simplify things. We have to focus in lead generation, again, to stimulate their interest to create availability. And the way we do that is by creating a simple, clear, concise, and compelling message. There's three ways that we implement in all of our messaging at Outflow to do this. We call it the 3C framework. And I'm gonna get to the messages in a minute, because I know you guys are all wanting to see what that is. There's three things we always do with all of them. And this is really important. I would actually follow this more than the actual messages I give you. First one is open up with a relevant connection, which is answering the question of why should I care? It's gonna get them to continue reading the message. Why should I care about why you're reaching out to me? It's very, very hard to get people's attention today. And you wanna show why you're relevant in their world today. What relevant problems can you solve for them? What relevant um, aspirations you can help them capture? And why are you the credible expert? At Outflow, ours is, by the way, put that in plain English. I say, hey, we help business brokers close more deals by getting them meetings and appointments with their ideal prospects. It's pretty simple, yeah? Like that's not wrong, that's plain English and it sounds like an ideal transformation you're looking to go after. Once you open up with that connection piece, you wanna go after curiosity. And curiosity is why now? Which is answering the question of what leverage do you have that makes them wanna speak with you? What, what do you have to wanna get them to carve out 10 to 15 minutes on the phone, or however long it is, 30 minutes, on the phone with you? What do you have for them? And last and definitely not least is call to action. What do you want me to do next? The easiest way to, to know if you're being effective with your call to actions is are you ending all of your messages with a question mark? We have a rule in our company is you cannot end an email without a question mark. Because I need everything in my client's uh, ballpark. I don't want to be the person that's holding my client up. I always want to be pushing out and ending everything with a question mark. So a good call to action would be, hey, John, does Thursday at 3 p.m. work or next Monday at 4? Question mark. Not hope to, hope to hear back. That's, that's, that's a wish, right? We want to end everything with a question mark. So call to action. When it comes to LinkedIn, there's four messages that we like to send. The first thing is a connection message. I'm going to show you what we send. I would even, you can even just honestly send no message at all and you will get the connection request on LinkedIn. After they accept, you wanna wait a day or two, okay? We don't wanna do the whole like, right when they accept, we pounce on them and send them something and go, go crazy. We wanna wait a day or two, then follow up with, a, with the first message to ask them to introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, how you can help them to see if they're open to a call. After that, if they don't answer that, we wait three days and send message number two. If they don't answer from there, we wait three more days and, and do, send the final message. So what do these look like? This, I, by the way, I hope these, you guys can see these in a second. This next one for connection messages is not as important, but here are some quick examples. Uh, I'll read the first one to you. So it goes, uh, hi, Greg, I'm looking to connect with FinTech founders. I love what you're doing open to connecting, right? Nothing crazy there. Uh, here's another example. Hi, uh, hi, John, I was chatting with Bob the lawyer and you were mentioned in the conversation. I was impressed with the growth and traction of being in the FinTech space, open to connecting here. 
So just simple stuff. You don't even have to really send a connection message. Here's one that we put together. I'm gonna to show you some longer form ones, some medium form ones, and some really short ones using this 3C framework. And again, you can uh, uh, model this and then modify it. Model and modify. Because some people when they see this, they go, yeah, that seems pretty good, but I wouldn't talk like that. Cool. This is my message, not yours. This is mine. So what I would say is model it and modify it. So here's an example of a follow-up message you can send, and I'll show you it actually in LinkedIn with people responding. So let's open up with a relevant connection. Hi, John, I'm with whatever your business brokerage is. We specialize in helping staffing and workforce solution firms in the human capital management industry, that's the ideal prospect, exit at the highest valuation possible for their situation. We have over a decade of experience and a core focus in the space. For context, we recently advised and represented the owners of the following firms in their sale. And they put some case studies in there to show why they're credible, why they're the best at what they do, and why you should listen to them. The curiosity phase is, hey, I'm happy to share some notes on current market valuations and scenarios relevant to your company. Would you be a bit available for a 10 minute call next Monday or Wednesday? Regards of cash. Here is it in action. So here's, I don't know if you can see it okay. Can you guys in the back see it okay? If not, put your thumbs down. Okay, cool. There, here's a response example of what we sent out. And here's a screenshot of a guy named Steven saying, hey, Monday, Monday looks good at my work. I'm on vacation starting Tuesday. What time might be good? So it's a bit of a longer form one. I'll show you another one that they can use as a first message. Hi, Jason. I work with whatever your uh, broker firm is or MA advisory firm, a global M&A firm focused exclusively on advising pest control companies on exits and M&A strategies. Bob's Pest Control appeared in our feed and I wanted to reach out. Our firm of professionals have completed over 500 transactions across 41 countries in the space. We've advised companies like, put some case studies in to show why you're credible, to name a few. Would like to connect with you to discuss recent transactions that may be relevant to you. Happy to share both valuation metrics and market insights. Open to a quick call next week. Regards, so-and-so. Here it is in action. Hey, Bob, or whoever, whoever they replied to. Hey, Bob, let's talk next week. Does Monday the 25th at 3 p.m. work? And there's just some examples of some replies of this in action. So what do we send if we, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, here's one more. It's really short. You guys will like this one. Uh, hey, Jason, I advise oil, gas, and energy service companies on M&A and exit strategies. For context, we are, ha we are and have been working with businesses specifically in the Permian Basin area. So this is getting really relevant in the sectors they service and in the regions. I'd love to have a call with you to discuss a couple ideas specific to whatever the oil and gas company is and provide examples of some recent situations we've worked on that I think could be interesting and relevant. Open to a call next week. And here are some examples. Hey Enrique, thank you for reaching out. Let's get together on a Teams call and meet and discuss M&A opportunities. I would appreciate meeting with you and learning more. Drop me a note. And there's another guy basically saying, thank you, getting, thanks for getting in contact. Let's have a discussion. Here's my cell phone number, here's my email. I apology on delaying and responding. I was away on vacation last week. I'm looking forward to speaking with you, Andrew. Now, once we send that message, we want to find, want to find a way to come back around without coming across as needy, right? We, we don't want to send the exact same message, but we want to find a new way to articulate the value proposition in a new way. So how do we do that? We send basically a more condensed version, except we try to come back around, kind of re-angling the value prop. So we go, hi, John, just want to circle back and check if you have an exit goal within the next 12 months. Or if you want to discuss key value drivers for something, some for the company name. That little key piece up here is a friction point. I'll get into that later if you want. But uh, the next 12 months is kind of qualifying, saying, hey, are you actually serious in exiting within a certain kind of time frame? It really helps qualify the client to want to speak to you or not. We specialize in helping oil, gas, and energy service companies in the Permian Basin area maximize their valuation. And since we regularly work with businesses like yours, I thought it'd be a good time to connect. Let me know if you're open for a 10 minute call next week. And here it is in action. Hey, let's connect today. What time suits you? Right? Quality, quality campaign messaging right there. Here's another example. This one's cool. This is like a what's changing curiosity phase. John, new buyers and investment funds are reaching out directly to acquire established direct to consumer businesses like yours. Unfortunately, entrepreneurs are selling their businesses at steep discounts. This is where we come in, to help sell your business at a premium by driving interest among many funds and buyers and negotiate a premium deal. Are you considering looking at a potential exit or valuation of your company? Boom, quality, quality campaign response. 
Uh, hi, it's always an option. Let me know if you also look at last year's profits, the value of the company, and then he starts listing off the different e-commerce brands and web properties that he owns below. VIPs, very important points, action move summary for this. Develop your three to four messages and assets utilizing the 3C framework. Remember, model and modify, again, this will be sent to you. You can use it for inspiration and execute your own process. This next phase here is where the rubber meets the road. It's where we do the sleeve rolling. And I always say this, and I'm always hesitant to like put this piece in because this is where things get a little bit technical, but again, you're gonna have the system, so I wouldn't worry about it. Um, these are the simple systems that you execute daily, where now that we have our list, we have our messaging, how do we actually log into LinkedIn and where do we go to start finding these people and messaging them, the step-by-step -step process. So that way you or your team can implement it. And the goal really with Lead Gen 2 is, is we, wanna, we wanna build a pipeline. Like th that's a goal with LinkedIn. Like we don't wanna just get on the phone and, and try to push it as fast as we can to a sell side opportunity, which that is great too. But the pi your pipeline, your pipeline is all the deal opportunities you have is your future stream of earnings. And we gotta make sure that that's what we're focused on with Lead Gen. That's what it is, it's building an asset which is your future stream of earnings. And I'm gonna show you running this, how you can do 150 deal opportunities in a year by doing three simple actions. Action number one is we send connections every single day. Next one is we make contact utilizing the messaging that I just walked you through. And then lastly is we have phone calls with people who are interested in selling. And here's how the math pans out. If you look at it on a funnel. With LinkedIn, you're only gonna be able to send about 20 to 25 connections a day. That's it, you're gonna get tapped out. Some's a little bit more, some's a little bit less. If you do that every day, you're gonna have five to seven people that you're gonna be able to respond to and have a dialogue with. Because you're gonna get about a 25% connection rate, or I'd say anywhere between 17 to 25% connection acceptance rate. When you reach out to them, you're gonna get anywhere between a seven to 10% booking rate. We see some people, like that pest control one, get close to 20%. Again, if you're more relevant and you show why you're credible in their space, they're gonna to wanna to connect with you. They're gonna to wanna to have a conversation with you. And if you do that, if you do ordinary, listen, ordinary things consistently done equal extraordinary results. Not play pin the tail on the donkey, let's start and stop things, let's try multiple vendors, let's do PPC, oh, let's stop, let's go do some SEO, oh, that ain't working on month one, oh, let's go do some email, oh, that ain't working. Ordinary things, consistently done equal extraordinary results. And what you get from that is about 100, anywhere between 100 to 180 some odd deals, deal opportunities a year. That is an asset. That is your future stream of earnings. Right there, an asset, which is your pipeline. So let's walk through and unpack how we do that on LinkedIn. Let's, let's walk through everything from connections, messages daily, and booking those appointments. So I'm gonna go back to Sales Navigator. See those three dots on the red square, everybody? Hello? Yes. Awesome. Click the three dots. I'm being slow here because I'm showing you how easy it is, but it's, it's, we have to, be, have to be detailed here. So click the three dots. A message like that is gonna pop open and it's gonna say, what do you wanna say to Len? What kind of message do you wanna send him? You, oh yeah, and there you just put your connection message in or you just hit send, send invitation, whatever it is. After done that, this is rocket science. Everybody here has sent connection requests, right? Everybody, okay, and, oh, and everybody's also accepted connection requests before, correct? Okay, good. If you know how to accept a connection request, you can do this next part. You go to my network, you click that, okay? <laughs> And you're gonna see this little, on the left-hand side there, called connections. These are all your connections. So again, it's just like when you see, like Lee and Dave wanna connect with me. That's how I accept connection requests. But I'm just gonna ignore that, I'm gonna go over, which is cool, I mean, you can accept this if you want, but I'm gonna go to the connections to say, hey, who, who accepted my connections recently? You're gonna click that, and you're gonna go, you're gonna see something that looks like this. You're gonna see all the people that you've recently connected with. See where I put there on the right-hand side, all the messaging option there? You're also gonna see, when was it that they accepted your connection request? 
And if you're just following up with everybody one day after they accepted it, you look and be like, oh, five hours ago, 24 hours ago, 24 hours ago, 24 hours ago, 24 hours ago. Those are the people you send message number one to. You click that little message box and you send messages and you ask for phone calls and you do ordinary things consistently and hopefully you get something that looks like this. That's the goal. We want people booking appointments with you and you have notifications coming in saying, hey, somebody's booked a call with you from LinkedIn. But I have news for you. I don't know if it's good news or bad news, but it is news. It's gonna require action because information without action is just information. That's one thing I always tell my team. And there's two ways that I see that you can take action from here. Somebody, Greg or Maggie or somebody's gonna send all these slides to you and you can model and modify what we're doing for yourself and execute it and do ordinary things consistently and start to build a pipeline, start to build an asset. And don't play pin the tail on the donkey and jump around and try all these different tactics. Run process, commit. That's action path number one. Action path number two is you wanna have a partner execute uh, something like this for you and that's what we do at Oakflow. And I'm sure a lot of you have spoke to our lovely team members um, at our booth, with the big purple booth. And this is what we do every single day. We, I help you identify who your ideal prospect is. We craft razor sharp messaging that fits those ideal prospects and gets their attention. And we get the meetings, appointments, and conversations secured for you. So that way you can close more deals. And no, no matter where you sit, um, the premise of this presentation, going back to what I said to you, is that if you're looking to close more deals, I believe your number one asset is to have a lead generation system that you control, where you have a process where you can reach out and get in front of people. And if you wanna close more deals, we need to stop just relying on one or two sources or just relying on referrals and actually have a system that we can rely on. If you wanna close more deals, you have to get control of your deal flow so that, that way you can build your pipeline, which is your future stream of earnings. You have to get control of your deal flow, so that will be only the one thing, like I said, I asked you at the very beginning, which is to close more transactions. Thank you all for listening. Let's, we can do some Q&A.